Hello and let's talk about the COVID-19 situation in Maharashtra. The state is clearly one of the epicenters of the disease in the country with close to 100,000 cases of which at least 50,000 are active or close to 50,000 are active. The state is way ahead of all the others in terms of key indicators. Mumbai district itself has over 50,000 cases overall and reports say that there is a shortage of beds and ventilator facilities. We talked to our Mumbai correspondent Amay Tirodkar on this issue. Thank you Amay so much for joining us. So uh, to begin with, uh, uh, it's estimated that rains may begin in Mumbai today and Maharashtra right now is obviously leading the number of COVID-19 uh, cases. So could you first talk about what the disease situation is in the state right now? Uh, state is uh, very much ahead of all other states in India. Right now there are 94,000 cases, overall 94,000 cases, and, uh, which includes 3,600 deaths. And there are active patients are around 46,000. So uh, uh, the proportion of uh, getting people, getting patients cured is almost 50%. But still, the Maharashtra number is very, very much higher. Like Tamil Nadu is right now somewhere 35 to 40,000. But Maharashtra may touch uh, 1 lakh patient in next two days. So that, that kind of uh, seriousness of situation is... Here, here in Maharashtra and particularly in Mumbai. Right. So also could you talk a bit about the situation in Mumbai as well in terms of what are the key uh, hotspots, what is the kind of uh, say condition on the ground right now that is there? Uh, one thing is sure, government data is uh, trying to tell us or government data is telling us that Mumbai is doubling the rate of patients is, uh, is, is increased in last one month. So on 1st May, it was 11 days, the doubling rate of patients, but right now it is 25 days, so which is good thing. But on the other hand, it is also true that the situation in Mumbai, particularly in hospitals, uh, about uh, uh, patients getting ICU beds, patients getting oxygen, ventilators, patients getting even ambulances, these all issues are very much there, very serious issue, issues are, are there. And many patients, uh, at least I know minimum 10 patients who died just because they didn't get ventilators. So that kind of situation is right now there. Mm -hmm. uh, there are, it is unimaginable rather that a, that a city of 1 crore and 80 lakh people at least is having just 1146, 1146 ICU beds. It's a disastrous situation. And 100% beds are right now full. Who, uh, which are uh, used for COVID-19 patients. Uh, yesterday, BMC commissioner told me that they are going to add more 500, uh, 500 ICU beds by June 13. But I don't know till that time, till June, June 13, the number could be much higher than right now. So uh, uh, there was 97 deaths, deaths yesterday. Day before yesterday also in 97 deaths in, deaths in Mumbai, which is uh, higher 152 deaths in Maharashtra yesterday, day before yesterday, 149 deaths. So the number of deaths is also higher. And we must need to uh, mention here that 985 patients have died due to Corona from uh, in, in entire uh, month of May. But in last 11 days only, 685 people have died in Mumbai due to Corona. So that kind of the ratio right now is there. There are 1,954 1, uh, people have died due to Corona in Mumbai till yesterday. So it could touch, it is feared, it could touch uh, to 2,000 mark uh, uh, today itself, so which is which is much higher than any other city in uh, in, uh, in India. So that is the situation of Mumbai right now. Right. And what are the emergency measures the government is taking or BMC is taking right now to sort of Especially because the need right now seems to be, like you mentioned, in terms of beds and other medical facilities. Well, so government is claiming. Uh, uh, government is claiming that they are adding ICU ICU beds. They are adding uh, more hospitals. Few hospitals are there with, which were not uh, ready to take COVID nineteen patients and big names like Lilavati and others. They have given shown notices. Uh, they were asked to. Uh, take up uh, COVID-19 patients, get admitted to COVID-19 patients. So that's, that is what government is, is right now trying to do. But yes, it is also true that uh, there is a lot of mismanagement, on, particularly in Mumbai. Uh, there are hospitals where, uh, where oxygen is uh, a major issue in, of BMC hospitals. Right now, uh, 
medicines, uh, oxygen, uh, ventilators, ICU beds are really, really major issues. Uh, and it is, it is very much known that COVID-19 is very resource demanding disease. You need ventilator, you need ICU bed, you need quarantine system, and you need it must. So it is very resource demanding disease. Only if you could provide the, 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 the kind of resources, only then you will be out of this current danger. So that is Absolutely. what the biggest challenge people state about. Absolutely. And also with the monsoons likely to start, what are the key concerns before the authorities and people? Uh, there are two, three concerns. Generally, in normal days, monsoon is uh, it's good for other people, but always a headache for Mumbaikers, the citizen of Mumbai. Because everywhere, the Nala, uh, the running, uh, the train stops, and uh, all, all those kind of problems. But right now, there are uh, claims that uh, there is no Nala cleaning in last one and two months. Generally, this March to May period is uh, used for that Nala cleaning and uh, getting sewage out of uh, uh, those choked gutters and all. Right, so right now, so th these these works have not uh, been completed because there are no workers, sanitation workers who come, but they have they they are already exhausted just because of uh, these hospitals and other issues. So, so the right now challenge before is not to stop Mumbai mm -hmm. because in in monsoon period generally in month of July two to three days we waste every year just because the water logging. So that will be the biggest concern for, for a state government. Again, right. there are few setups of beds outside in ground uh, for COVID-19 patients. There are some camps in Dharavi which are, uh, which are, for, which are being used for uh, institutional quarantines, but right. they are outside. So that government has to accommodate them inside in some schools, colleges, so those are also uh, some serious challenges before the uh, city administration and the state administration. Right. Thank you so much, Amir, for talking to us. Yeah, thank you. Our second segment is about the issue of online exams in Delhi University. We talked to Abha Dev Habib of the Democratic Teachers Front on this issue. In most countries, education is as a result shifting online and in her university as well, that is Delhi University in India, a similar trend is being followed. And now the university is set to begin online exams, open book exams from July 1st. And this is happening despite massive opposition amongst the student and teachers community. So Professor Abha teaches physics and she's also the treasurer of the Delhi University Teachers Association. And she will be talking to us about this, uh, about this opposition and about the issues that are in this policy of online education. So thank you for joining us today. And can you first Thank tell you. us? Can you first uh, tell us about what exactly this uh, system is of this open book online exam? How is this being planned, and how will this be conducted? Yeah. So uh, to understand uh, this, first I'll uh, like to share that how the structure of Delhi University. Uh, for example, in Delhi University, courses are offered in two or three different modes. One is regular mode. Students have to take classes in uh, colleges or in uh, departments and uh, then you have school of open learning so a distance uh, education mode and then similarly on parallel to distance education mode is um, for the women board uh, for women education but um, based on that distance learning mode uh, and, uh, and undergraduate level teaching happens in roughly 55 uh, 56 uh, colleges uh, for humanities social science and sciences while for internal assessments, teachers work, um, take tests, quizzes, and give assignments and uh, assign internal as, uh, marks, uh, uh, internal assessment marks to students. But all students have to then take a central uh, semester end examination. Mm -hmm. And a combination of this, 25% is internal assessment and 75 is your semester end exam. That total becomes your uh, grades. Uh, these are used towards grades for the students. Now, this announcement of OBE happened only in around uh, 13th May. Hmm. And for the first time, we came to know that the university is thinking of have, ha uh, having uh, conducting an open book examination. 
Before that, um, uh, UGC was studying the possibilities for universities across, and university had come with a very flexible formula. And we were looking forward to a similar kind of formula. I want to tell you that Delhi University is a central university. Uh, there are other 42 central universities also. Delhi University is a central university, and this means that uh, the student population is very, very heterogeneous. We get students from across the country. And um, in this, uh, there is a very high percentage of, um, uh, uh, there are 50% seats are reserved for SE, ST, OBC. And then we also have reservation for EWS students. So this is the composition, student composition for our, um, uh, of our university. Now, if the university suddenly brings the formula of open book examination, our students are not used to it. Also, the teachers were never instructed to teach in a particular manner. Uh, so that is a, a problem for us. And the open book examination, the university is saying that for each student, there will be a folder crea uh, created on the website in which the question paper will be posted for the day. And the student will have to download uh, work on the paper and upload it within three hours. Uh, as per the university understanding, the question paper is something which the student should complete in two hours. An additional hour is being given only to uh, take care of connectivity issues for downloading and uploading. So this is a basic format and uh, colleges have been instructed to help a student uh, if they are not able to upload. So maybe then a question or if they are not able to download for some reason. Because suddenly when a large number of students will be taking exam, other universities is not also sure whether the website will work or not. Mm. So colleges have been then uh, given the charge of uh, following up the things uh, case to case. First, I mean, for, uh, give a uh, personalized attention to students, to email them the question paper, to also take their answer script. So mm. this is um, uh, uh, broadly what OBE is for Delhi University. So here, of course, you're mentioning issues of connectivity. And now, I mean, what are the other issues that are, that could come up in this system? Because uh, like you were saying, a lot of the students are from outside Delhi, so they would have left for their homes. And I think there have been issues discussed about how they might not have access to materials and internet. So a lot of issues have been talked about uh, in this in in relation to this to these exams can you tell us more about this and why it's being opposed yeah see um one thing is that uh, why do you want to examine student the fundamental question is that you want to examine whether they have understood uh, what you were trying to aim at uh, whether you have those learning outcomes whether the student have critically understood uh, analyzed uh, the reading material uh, learned uh, new things, uh, new techniques, or whatever. Now, when the teaching has been very uneven, uh, you see that you, we were trying uh, to connect for this interview for last uh, 20 minutes, and we did not have connection. Now, mm -hmm. when I say that students from across the country come, then there are many students coming from suburban and rural backgrounds. They come from suburban and rural backgrounds. And if in Delhi, the connectivity issues are like this, you can only imagine what is happening in Rajasthan, in some um, uh, jilla of UP or somewhere else. Also students, 50% students, I mean, uh, you know, uh, we conducted from uh, Delhi University Teachers Association, we conducted a survey among students and uh, 51,500 students uh, responded to our uh, survey. And in this, 50% uh, students said that they are from outside Delhi. Now, we need to understand that in Delhi University, we were having a mid-semester break, which also included a festival. Holi was there, um, is one of the major um, festivals of the country. And students had gone back only for three days or four days, thinking that they will be back. So they did not even carry uh, the study material from before the mid-semester break. I mean, for uh, the classes which were done in January, February, March, they do not even have reading material for that. So when we uh, were instructed and the lockdown started around 19th March, just as our uh, university was reopening, the lockdown started. Uh, I want to say here that uh, no institutional help was provided to students or to teachers. Uh, we are in a 
you can understand that uh, there is no scholarship for stu uh, teachers to buy laptops, to um, have basic infrastructure ready for all times, to be using it all the times. Uh, so uh, it depends on whether I, as a teacher, has uh, you know created that facility for myself at home or not. Uh, so and the institutions just uh, as an order, the vice chancellor or the MHRD says that teachers will have to engage students. Now teachers did whatever they were able to do. Similarly, our students are not uh, equipped with laptops or netbooks or anything. There are no scholarships to uh, uh, ensure that there is minimum infrastructure available at the student's end, uh, say uh, uh, some connectivity, a broadband, or uh, to say that netbook. Uh, so um, when we started teaching, the students said that they have not carried material and they are not even able to you know, connect so quickly because things have happened so drastically for them, the things have changed, that they were taking little time to settle down with the new um, uh, things, uh, a completely uncertain world. And um, uh, we can only imagine that if teachers are, or, um, uh, you know, uh, we are feeling jittery, how our students were take a thing, uh, looking at the whole thing. Uh, so one, they do not have material. The other is that they are looking at, we have a very unequal um, uh, playing field. Uh, we have students from marginalized section. We have a large number of students coming from um, a differently abled section. Uh, so uh, with these uh, things and no institutional help to uh, ensure a minimum level playing field, we can only imagine how uneven our teaching has been. So mm -hmm. for an un uh, uneven teaching, even when I was taking classes, I was uploading material. I was also trying to hold classes on Zoom. I saw that only one fourth student was able to come on zoom and they said that connectivity is one issue uh, conditions at home is another um, situation that they do not get an environment where they can uh, concentrate on their studies uh, the environments are very different for all our students so a large number also said that the environment at home is not conducive for us to join uh, zoom sessions regularly only one fourth students were coming. Mm -hmm. So when I when I'm making efforts, even then I can't reach my students equally. And if we look at uh, the Delhi University structure, which I told that physics honors, for example, is being taught in roughly 25 colleges. Now, if our teaching has been so unequal, can we test students through a centralized examination, which is going to be common for all? The mm -hmm. students and teachers did not protest so much towards internal assessment. Because when I took internal assessment, though I found it very difficult to track each and every student to extend my deadlines, but I was still able to reach to my students. Uh, there are students, I will say that I was able to reach, but uh, many teachers have reported that even for internal assessment, they're finding it difficult to reach to the student because the student does not have any internet connection. Uh, so I'm saying that even for internal assessment, suppose I made efforts, I tested them on what I was able to teach them, how evenly I was able to approach them. I, um, uh, I tested them on that. Now, for a centralized examination, this situation does not um, uh, is not there for the student. The student could negotiate much more with me than with the centralized examination. Therefore, we think that any examination right now will be unjust because the teaching has been uneven because the institution, you know, I am from Miranda House and in Miranda House, I will appreciate that uh, academic committee meetings were held regularly, departmental meetings were held regularly. So we were able to do a coordinated effort. Mm -hmm. uh, all teachers yeah. tried to do similar things. And we also, we are teachers in regular stream. And uh, we did not have this idea of online teaching, various applications, all this we had to learn on our own. Mm -hmm. And it did help us to have, uh, you know, meetings. But there were uh, no orders from the university, no systematic approach to see that uniformly this was done across colleges or across departments. So there are departments in colleges where there has been no coordinated efforts. Now you want to suddenly test the student. I think it is very unfair. Any kind of examination will be unfair because uh, of the unequal uh, level playing field, uh, um, uh, unequal um, uh, playing field for the student. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now, an examination will be map of how uh, uh, well they were, um, how well equipped they were 
Hmm. In terms of infrastructure, internet connection, environment at home, if a student had best of all of this, they may perform a little better and others uh, will be damaged. So we think that any form of examination will be bad. The other thing is because we are a central university and most of our students in my class, in fact, in some departments, in some colleges, uh, the number of outstation student is as large as like 95% students from outside. Uh, now they're coming back to Delhi. Uh, we'll be in quarantine. It will also mean that uh, most of the students do not stay on campus. Um, I mean, they, we only have a limited number of hostel seats. Uh, they stay uh, on rented accommodation. Whether now they will get rented accommodation or not is also a thing. So I don't think so. Pen and paper is possible. Um, a routine exam is possible in the near future. And uh, online examination will be completely discriminatory. And when the letter of the dean examination came on 14th May, uh, the first announcement of OBE for the students and teachers. Uh, I will like to say here that we were very hurt in the sense that it uh, it also filled us with some anger that it did not respond to needs of and entitlements of different sections. It did not say that what will happen if in three hours a student is not able to upload. It did not say what will happen to blind students who need a scribe and who will not get scribed right now because uh, of the norms of physical distancing. Uh, so I think uh, OB has to be rethought. The other thing is that OB in the OB, there is no way of maintaining, um, uh, it is not a, we fear that the private uh, uh, players and a group of students can completely rig this examination. Mm -hmm. So in some sense, it is not really an examination which will be a credible system. That's all we have in this episode of Let's Talk. We'll be back on Monday with the latest news developments from the country. Till then, keep watching News Click.